Two years ago, I decided to start a little garden of my own. The first year, my yield was a single bowl of lettuce and five cherry tomatoes. But this year, I promised myself, this year was going to be different. I started planning in March. I bought a couple new books, joined 11 or 12 gardening Facebook groups, and when it got warmer outside, I went to Home Depot a lot. I built new beds, trellises, a snap pea teepee, a bunny fence, and an irrigation system complete with an automated timer, the whole shebang. Soon after, I posted a progress photo on Facebook, and there was this one reply that caught my eye. I come from earth workers. My grandparents and my parents had gardens and loved growing things. When my dad died, we wrote in his obituary that he was comfortable in the dirt. There is something incredibly powerful in that phrase related to hard work, reward, sustainability, generosity, seasons, harvest, death, and new life. Blaine, it looks like you might be comfortable in the dirt like my dad was, and may you continue to be. She might be right. Facing some hard stuff throughout my life has forced me to decide whether to run from the messy moments the dirt, or engage them with the hope that they might eventually change me. Now, I didn't learn this on my own. I had a lot of help from a rabbi named Jesus, who was, incidentally, not afraid of digging into the dirt, even when it cost him everything. Jesus was always getting his hands dirty. He was perpetually running toward the hard, the messy stuff, instead of running away. Also, that people could be connected back to God. On the night that Jesus was betrayed, he sat in the upper room with his friends, and he lifted a loaf of bread and a cup of wine, elements whose origins were comfortable in the dirt, the grain and the grape all meant to represent Jesus' ultimate willingness to be comfortable in the dirt himself. In John 12, 24, Jesus speaks to this directly. Unless a grain of wheat falls into the earth and dies, it remains by itself alone. But if it dies, it bears much fruit. Like the solitary grain of wheat left to die alone, Jesus was about to enter his darkest moment on our behalf. He was about to enter death so new life could be born. Quick side note, if you want things to grow, you need dirt, obviously. But the very best dirt is filled with compost, or more plainly put, if you think about it, when we encounter the messy moments of life, we really have two choices. We can run away from them, or we can lean into them and let them change us. Jesus, he leaned in. To follow Jesus in the world means that we must follow him into the same sort of experience. And as we celebrate communion with the grain and the grape, knowing that it often takes death and dirt for new life to grow, may we take the mess of our lives and hand it over to God. May we let him create something new and beautiful. And may we all be comfortable in the dirt.